Right, you guys, in the last video, we talked about the dangers of Windows 7 and how can you continue using Windows 7 in 2022? Only use Windows 7 ISOs from Microsoft. Never download uh, pre bundled Windows 7 ISOs with so called updates and stuff inside them. They're not genuine and they can cause you major problems. Next up, make sure it's fully updated with all of the latest updates which were offered by Microsoft before end of life. Now, once end of life comes, unless you are paying some sort of subscription based system by, uh, you know, extended uh, security updates, then you won't be getting any more updates. And I think that's even stopped now. So that uh, offer is now closed. But once you're fully updated, you should see something looking like this. And that means your system is fully updated with every update available up until the point of end of life for Windows 7. Next up, you're going to need a browser, especially if you are online. And if you are using Windows 7 online, then you're running a big risk, but we've already covered that. So let's go ahead and install a secure updated web browser. And Chrome and Oprah are offering uh, browsers still to be used with Windows 7. So you can download those and they will work perfectly fine on there. And it is the very latest releases from those to be working with Windows 7. So for people that said in the comment section, you can't uh, download updated browsers anymore, that's not quite true. You can still find browsers that do support Windows 7. I don't know how long for, but you can use Chrome and it will work perfectly fine. I wouldn't advise you to do any banking or any sort of financial stuff online, but I would definitely uh, install a updated browser and keep it updated uh, to the very latest versions. So there we go, we've got Chrome installed now and that's working perfectly fine. Next up, you wanna be thinking about getting yourself an antivirus program. This was another concern for some people. Some people said that antivirus don't support Windows 7. Avast are still supporting Windows 7. You can still download the free version and get it installed on the computer. Now, of course, if you're not using internet access, then there's not much point of having an antivirus program because you're not connected to the outside world, which means uh, vulnerabilities like malware, ransomware, and all those other nasties are not going to be able to get on your system unless you plug in a USB flash drive with them uh, on that drive and it has some sort of uh, auto run virus on your flash drive. So make sure that you don't ever do anything like that. And if you're not using uh, basically online uh, connectivity then you won't need an antivirus program but if you are then i would advise you to get at least an antivirus program that keeps virus definitions updated and that it has security features in there that's going to protect you a little bit online now this is not foolproof and there is zero day malware that will bypass uh, basically uh, antivirus programs like this and because your system is not getting any security patches there is going to be vulnerabilities and flaws that the antivirus program might be unable to block uh, because of the vulnerabilities and exploits that they can use. So bear that in mind. And there is tons of malware and other stuff out there that will easily infect Windows 7 more than Windows 10. So you should really consider updating or upgrading to Windows 10. Next up, you're going to need a firewall. Now I've gone with Komodo Firewall here. It does work with Windows 7 and they have moved on to another version of Komodo now, which does have uh, the firewall and antivirus program together. So if you're going to be using that version, then make sure that you don't use uh, Avast because you're going to end up with a conflict because both of them are antivirus programs. You only need one antivirus program. So basically a firewall and an antivirus is going to be fine. Now, if you're going to be using a paid piece of software with firewall and antivirus, then you won't need Komodo. So just one firewall, one antivirus program should do you uh, pretty okay. Now, again, this is going to help protect against malware and other nasties, ransomware as well, and protect you a little bit online. So you can see what's coming in and out of your computer. So any file that's going to run on the computer, this is going to give you a nag box that tells you, do you want to run this file? And it's just a safety net for you to be able to say, yes, I want this to run or no, I don't want it to run. I'm also going to be using their secure DNS on here. And there's some other settings on here as well, which does protect you. And also Avast and Komodo will offer you a browser, which is a secure browser, which you can use as well. So depending on whether you want to use that and set this as your default browser, 
it's entirely up to you. I still wouldn't recommend you do any sort of purchasing online uh, or anything like that or banking online with Windows 7. It's super risky. And again, you really shouldn't be going online and you shouldn't really be using Windows 7. But if you want to use it, this is what you're going to have to do. Next up, you want to check for updates and do some uh, uh, reboots here to make sure everything is set in place. It does take a little bit of time to reboot and get this up and running. But once that's done, you should have your browser, your antivirus and your firewall and all of your updates installed. And you should be now uh, pretty good to go. Now, there is another step you can take which we'll take a look at and uh, just making sure that all this is updated. Now, I'm not going to go in here and show you all the settings because that will make the video far too long. Uh, but there is some settings in here which you can uh, use to make it more secure. And you can see here straight away the hips down on the bottom right hand corner has popped up and it's saying something's trying to change the registry key. Now, something like this is a great asset to protect your PC against malware and other nasty infections. Next up, you can use Acronis anti-ransomware software now they've uh, ceased support for this one now you have to use the full-blown anti-ransomware program built into acronis but you can still download this software and it still works so you could still use the acronis ransomware protection and it will still block uh, ransomware it's just not getting updated anymore this part of it because they've embedded it into their actual software but again if you do go on the internet and you do want some protection then I would definitely recommend the Acronis ransomware protection software to protect you against ransomware. It's just another safety net. And yes, you are starting to add these layers of security in here. But again, remember, your PC is not being updated. So the security holes and flaws will be available for hackers to abuse and use. So having something like this to protect you will be a definite must. Also, go in and disable any unwanted services, things like remote desktop and things like that you definitely want to uh, block and disable all of those you don't want those working on a system which has vulnerabilities and uh, print spooler i wouldn't even advise plugging in a printer because print spooler has probably got plenty of bugs on it on this version like it did on windows 10 and windows 11 so bear that in mind now if you're using your computer with windows 7 on it offline and you've got a printer plugged into it that's perfectly safe there's no problem because there's no connection from the outside world. Remember when using Windows 7 on your home network, if you are connected to the internet and there is vulnerabilities that people can exploit, it's going to gain access to your computer and your network. So be very, very careful if you are connecting to the outside world. Now, having all these security measures in place will give you the best uh, head start against malware because malware is super easy to infect on Windows 7. So having all of these safety nets is going to make it a lot more safer to use if you insist having internet access on your Windows 7 based system. Now, obviously, if you're not using that, then you don't need to worry about all of this stuff. But again, if you are, then this is a must thing to do to your Windows 7 system because it just gives you that little bit of more layered protection. Also, I'd advise you to back all your data up on a regular basis to make sure that if you do get hit with ransomware, You'll always have your backups of your data and you can just reinstall Windows and basically uh, put your data back on. What I advise you to do is consider upgrading to a new operating system. Now, if your system really can't run it and it's not good enough to run the latest operating systems and you have no other option, then maybe consider upgrading to a Linux based system, which does get updated on a regular basis. Now, another thing as well is to make sure you're running a standard user account. Now, this is not foolproof, but it is another layer of security which you can add to your computer. Now, what this means is basically you are running as a standard user. You have no permissions. So anytime you go to install anything, it's going to ask for administration permission to install whatever it is you're installing. So theoretically, it's just another layer of security. And with your other software protecting you as well, it just gives you another layer of protection. For instance, if a malware dropped on your system, it might need permission to run as administrator to get installed on the system. And as a standard user, it's not going to be able to do that. Now, some ransomware will just bypass this and install anyway and encrypt all your data. And that is where the Acronis uh, anti-ransomware is going to come in and try to protect you and then you've got your firewall as well which is detecting 
other suspicious uh, behavior happening on your system that's trying to gain access to certain system files and other uh, directories there. So you can use this setup to try and protect yourself as much as possible. And this is probably the best chance you're going to have to keep your system safe. It's not 100% foolproof. No system out there is going to give you 100% protection, not even Linux or any of those other operating systems that people think it does. It just doesn't. Uh, there's no 100% secure operating system out there on the market. But this is just what you're going to have to do if you want to use Windows 7 online and in 2022. Now, of course, again, like I've already said a million times, if you're not online, you probably won't need to do a lot of this stuff because you're not connected to the outside world. Now, if your computer is super old and it just can't run Windows 10 and you're forced to use Windows 7 and you don't have the finances to upgrade to a newer computer, then maybe consider using Linux or something like that because Linux is going to be good enough and secure enough for your old computer. It still gets security updates and all those other updates available all the time. And whereas Windows 7 is just not going to get any of those anymore. So you're much better off to uh, jump ship to say Linux or use an operating system that is more secure like Windows 10 and Windows 11 if you want to stay on the Windows platform. So we've got our standard user account all set up now. All we need to do is log off our administrator account and log into our standard user account. And what this is going to do is running as a standard user, which means you're not running with administrator privileges. So anything that you go to install or do on this PC, you would need to make sure that you have your administrator password to type in to allow that to install. It's just a little layer of security that you can add to Windows. Now, it's not foolproof but it does help. So now we've got it logged into our standard user account. I'll download a piece of software and I'll show you exactly how it works. I'm not going to infect the system in this occasion, but I'll just show you basically what will happen when we download and install a piece of software. So I'll download 7-Zip and get this installed on the computer. It's important that when downloading any sort of software for an outdated operating system like Windows 7, that you use a updated version of that software and you can see here straight away, as soon as we go to install something, HIPS has picked up on it and it's saying something is trying to install something on the system. And again, it's now asking for the administrator password. And if I don't put the administrator password in, it's not going to be able to install that software. And uh, we put the password in and it's going to allow us to do it. Now, all of a sudden, we've got another pop up here. And this is because it's trying to modify keys and registry keys. And that's because it's installing software. So you can imagine what this would be like for malware. I've done videos on this many years ago and it works pretty well. And uh, basically it's just another layer of protection that you can use. And like I said before, make sure you're using software that is updated up until 2022. If it's really, really old software like 2010, it hasn't been updated since 2010, then you really shouldn't be using it on the internet because it is going to give you another vulnerability. So consider upgrading to Windows 10 or Windows 11. And one last thing, we're just going to change the UAC uh, settings here. And we're going to type UAC in the search, and this will open up the UAC control panel. Okay, so we're going to put this onto the strongest setting here. By changing it to the strongest setting, it will say programs try to install software or make changes to your computer. Uh, you will have to make the changes, and that's probably the best thing to have that set to. And click OK, and that will then... Uh, make it much more secure. So that's another layer of security we're adding onto Windows 7. Now, I just want to clear something up about yesterday's video and some comments. Some people seem quite deluded and also started saying I was fear-mongering and a bit paranoid. Let me just explain to you, if you have a car and you don't service it, what's going to happen to it? Eventually, it will start to run really rough, no oil changes, no filter changes, nothing, and it will start to get really, really bad. Without servicing or maintenance, it will not function the way it's supposed to. And that is the same thing for a lot of things, including operating systems. If you don't service Windows or give it updates and patches, it's going to become pretty unsecure and vulnerable. And this is a fact. Now, having some sort of vulnerabilities or holes in your operating system or exploits that hackers can use because it's not being patched is not paranoia and is not fear-mongering. It's an actual fact. Also, 
other people saying they've never been infected while still using Windows 7, you are talking about yourself. You cannot speak for the masses that use computers, especially Windows 7. I read one comment yesterday saying they've only received one adware in 13 years since they've been using Windows 7. Now you're talking about yourself. You're not talking about the masses of people that use Windows 7 and get infected all the time. Windows 7 is super easy to infect and without patches or security updates for Windows 7, it's going to become even more easy to infect because it's going to have more holes than Swiss cheese and hackers are going to have a field day, uh, you know, attacking Windows 7. Now, yes, you can secure Windows 7 a lot more with some of the methods I showed you in today's video. But just remember, not everyone is of maybe your level. The majority of people that use computers are of beginner or novice level. They're not really of advanced or expert level. And these are the ones that fall foul to malware and other issues. And they're probably not even capable of understanding firewalls and what to accept and what not to accept. And this is the ones that get infected and have all their data encrypted through ransomware. So bear that in mind when you're talking about yourself not getting infected on a PC because not everyone is like you. Now, even if you do secure Windows 7 the way I showed you, you can still be vulnerable to zero day attacks. And this is where the problem lies, especially with operating systems that are not being patched. Even with an antivirus program on there, if you've got vulnerabilities built into the operating system, it's going to make it super easy for hackers to gain access and things like that. So bear that in mind when you're talking about the overall uh, security of Windows 7. Now, we have different types of people with different types of needs. Now, some people have really old computers and they like using their old computers and they don't want to upgrade and their system might not be capable of running Windows 10 in some cases. And then you've got the people that just love really old hardware. And I can understand that. And people have nostalgia for Windows 7. But you have to be a little bit more clued up and a bit more understanding about the vulnerabilities that are going to be in the future if you continue to use Windows 7. And yes, there is workarounds for Windows updates for Windows 7. And yes, these are piracy and they are illegal. And also they come from Russia. So bear that in mind when you're running patches on your system to get access to uh, updates for another year on Windows 7. Anyway, there is quite a few different ways and different software you can use to protect your Windows 7 as best as you can. Just remember, never do financial stuff online with Windows 7. It's just not safe enough. And also another thing to take into account is if you can use it offline, then do so and maybe disable the network card while you're not using the Internet. I know it's a bit of a hassle, but you've got to stay safe out there. Anyway, I think that is going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and uh, I shall catch you in the next one. Now, if you have joined my YouTube members group and on my Discord server, let me know and I'll give you the correct role. Bye for now.